Hey, what's up guys, Excommunicator here, um, back here with uh, another Call of Duty gameplay commentary that's pretty old. Uh, it's been sitting on my computer for a very, very long time. Um, a few things before I get this commentary started. This is a very serious and very controversial commentary. Um, I don't, this is my own personal opinions, don't get offended by it. If you do, I'm sorry, that's just, I can't help you with that. So, yeah. Um, you're, I'm happy to respond to any comments on any of your point of views. If you post in the comments or message me, I will reply. I will, like, take the time of day to, like, listen to anything you have to say. And I will consider it. Like, I will be s very serious about this. Um, this gameplay can't really, it's headquarters. At, and then, um, the only interesting thing I know about this gameplay is I played on it split screen. And I play on like a 19 inch TV. So playing split screen and 19 inch and doing this good I thought was a very good gameplay. Um, this gameplay went over 15 minutes so I had to cut out my death. One of, well, I died about like 15 times. But only one of them was while the headquarters were capped. So instead of spectating I just cut it out so um, it wouldn't go past the time limit. So um, today's uh, commentary is going to be about... Um, social stigmas and or stigmas in society and it's not gonna do with the gameplay at all um i don't like commentating on my gameplay like commentating about the gameplay but um so uh, social stigma by definition is a severe social disapproval of personal characteristics or beliefs that like are like perceived like to people against like n like normalness in society um like it's you disprove of something because it's not normal to you kind of thing um some versions of like stigmas are uh one's mental illness like just physical differences and just like different races and religions um back in the old days a social stigma used to be leprosy and like if you were a leper that was it like you're out like no one talked to you you're pretty much deemed not fit for society kind of thing um, and, like, another big one is, just, like, someone who is, like, anorexic and, or someone has a phys physical disability or social disability, like, you'll see the kids at, like, I go to high school, I'm a sophomore in high school, and you'll just see the kids at school, and they'll be, like, the mentally handicapped kids. One of my teachers teaches the mentally handicapped kids. She, like, is an English, an honors English teacher, and she is a special services teacher. And just, the, like, the stories you'll hear, like, we have this thing in our school called People Tutors, and, um, hopefully I will be one of them. It's where, um, juniors and seniors, they help, like, teach the kids, uh, the, um, kids in a special program, in special services, like, uh, how to play sports and everything. So I thought that was really cool, and when I heard of it, I thought it'd be good, because you'll think of uh, someone with Down Syndrome, um, as someone who is socially inept, socially not capable of anything, but when it comes down to it, some people with Down syndrome are, like, remarkably smart, but they had, like, they are socially inept, but people just, like, mark them as idiots, retards, like, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and some of them are just, like, straight-up geniuses, and no one notices it, oh, because they put a label, oh, he has Down syndrome, he can't be smart. Um, another big one is just obesity in society, like, Okay, there's a certain, there's a very, very distance between obesity and, like, overweight and just, like, a little bit of chub chub here and there, like, being skinny and being anorexic. Um, if you're anorexic, people just, like, automatically assume, oh, you're not fit for anything, there's something wrong with you. Anorexia is pretty much, like, someone is, like, they don't see themselves as good in society kind of thing, like, they compare themselves to people in society, and they'll see themselves, um, like, as they need to lose more and more weight when they are, when they don't need to lose any more weight. Um, it's pretty much an eating disorder. Let's see. Here's the, like, actual like, definition. Uh, anorexia nervosa, which is the full name of it, is an eating disorder characterized by refusal to maintain a healthy body weight and an obsessive fear of gaining weight. Um. I was watching Tyra with my sister, don't judge, and this is, it was like the worst cases of anorexia they've ever, like, done. Um, this one, uh, uh, 
lady person, like female, um, it got to the point where she didn't shower because she thought her wa- her body was going to absorb the water. And this was 19 years of on. And, like, she's so skinny, her bones are showing. And she's telling us how she wants to lose weight in certain places when she's, like, 75 pounds. And she's not, like, a very short person either. And, um, yeah, it's a very, like, brutal thing. And it's because... I can base like my opinion is it's because of social stigmas. People see obesity and like, oh man, I'm not gonna talk to her. She's not gonna be cool because she has like a little extra weight than a normal person would, which is very unacceptable. Like um me, I was raised in Chicago, and it was very bad in my neighborhood. So I did not get out much because like I my parents didn't want me to get hurt. So, like, I gained a lot of weight when I was little. And when I moved um, to the southern Chicago and suburbs, I was an outcast because I had weight, a lot of extra weight. So, um, I was an outcast 6th, 7th, and 8th, uh, 5th, 6th, and 7th, and 8th grade, which, like, I'm not going to lie, made me into the person I am today. I'm a very social person. I'm very easy to get along with, and it, like, made me who I am today, but um, I would have rather done without those years because just the everything I went through like it kind of scarred me it's to the point where I wouldn't say I have a disorder but it's to the point where like I joined wrestling and I lost a lot of weight and like that was my main goal to lose a lot a lot of weight. um I started to like I started to overdo it like not like I was trust me I was eating because you have to eat in order to keep but, like, to the point where I was working out too much, like, right now, I tore muscle at the beginning of this wrestling season. I was, was mad beyond belief. Um, the doctor said, just give it, like, two weeks, it'll heal. Um, after that, um, it's been, like, two months, and just start hurting again. Like, I can't breathe without it hurting. And it's just gotten to that certain point where I overdid it, and I know I did something wrong. And I should have stopped while I was ahead. But I didn't. That was my problem. And, like, just a little rest and everything can help you so much. Um, like, I, since then I learned how to eat right, like, better than I was. Because, like, in wrestling, you have to, like, cut weight down to, like, the nearest hundredth. And, like, if you're over by a hundredth, you can't wrestle kind of thing. So, like, um, we got guides to, to help us eat. And they were, like, five, like, five meals a day. Well, three with, like, little tiny meals in between and then, like, a clear workout schedule and stuff like that. So, that helped. And, like, you have to, and like, if you're going to work out, you cannot, like, just straight work out every single day. You have to have a rest day. Your muscles need to recover. Just sleep every night is not going to help you at all. And you can't have more than one rest day in a row um, because, like, after, like, one day, if I rest for more than one day, like, I'll start getting out of shape again. And that's, like, not kind of thing. Um, I recently had some medical issues, and yeah, and um, just with my leg, and uh, I stopped, and I, s- I couldn't do anything. I couldn't walk on it. I couldn't do anything, and I gained, like, pretty much all the weight I lost in wrestling. I gained, like, half of it back, and I gained a lot of body fat percentage again, and it's bothering me a lot because I remember those fix- fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade years, and I'm going to start working hard again just to lose it again. Because obesity is in my genetics, and it's very hard. Um, Another really, really big topic that I'm going to go on about is um, uh, nationality, racism, and religion, or lack of religion. Um, In school, when I was little, I was forced to write religion. So, religion, don't, like, I am Muslim. I am. I believe there is a religion. If you do not believe this, please just don't call me out on it. This is just my personal thing. Uh, But it's just like it was force-fed down my throat to the point where at a point in time, I stopped. Just completely stopped. I'm like, I'm not religious. I'm not, it's like, et cetera. It's like when you're force-fed something, you don't want to be force-fed it. That's it. Just, that's all gone. And yeah, and um, since I was in first grade, when I was in first grade, that's when 9-11 happened. And I remember, well, I vaguely remember that, like, like my mom wouldn't, like, let us go outside. Like, she wouldn't take us to the stores anymore. And then when we would go to the stores, other people would just, like, start staring at us. And 
be like people just started like snickering it was horrible like people at school like my like my friends in first second like third grade like their parents would like see me and they just be like why are you talking to that kid like oh he's my friend he's like he's not your friend anymore just because just after that like they like they just assumed that just because i'm middle eastern my family has something to do with terrorism and it was very disappointing it was very very disappointing and like i lost a lot of friends that way and um and just like my religion like the social extremists like take it out of proportion that is not our religion let me tell you that right now it's not my religion at all and um that's it's like people perceive it how they perceive it but that is not it that like to be to sacrifice yourself for somebody is for the good of everybody not for the good of you while you kill 10,000 people that like makes no sense at all like if you're killing like 10,000 like insurgents or something okay but if you're killing like, 10,000 like innocent people in towers when they're just going to work to provide for their families and like while they're going like they're on a plane visiting their families how would that like how does that even make sense in their minds, this kind of thing? Like, they just gave everybody just a bad reputation just because they wanted to do something that they thought was right. Like, who gave them the responsibility to do that? And it was nobody. And it's exactly, like, why, like, they represent nobody. So, if you're going to, like, have a social stigma against anybody, don't have it against, like, Muslims or Middle Easterns. Have it against nobody because they are representing nobody. And, um, just in general... Um, a few that I, another few that came to the top of my head are, um, mental, well, mental illness I talked about, like, drug addiction, alcoholism, and just being a criminal. Like, right now I just turned 16 and I'm applying for jobs. Like, the main, like, big chunk of the application is, have you ever been arrested? What have you been arrested for? Like, okay, what if I was arrested? Like, what if it was, like, a petty charge? What if I went to rehab? What if I, like, changed kind of thing? And, like, people change. Like, I am a very like, big positive viewer, and I believe people can change with enough effort, and just questions like that, they just seem, they just seem to, like, put people down, like, oh, I was arrested, I can never get a job, I can't provide for a family, or, oh, I was an alcohol, I'm an alcoholic, I can never change, I'll always be an alcoholic, I'm good for nothing, or, oh, I'm a drug addict, I do heroin every day, I waste all my money, no one will ever love me, kind of thing, and that's just not the way to go around it, with, like, enough if you have effort on your part, they have effort on their part. Like, the doctors and you put in, like, an equal amount of effort. Um, it's like, well, uh, there, here's a show I used to watch when I was little. Well, not little. I still kind of watch it. It's called Full Metal Alchemist. It, their law of equivalent um, like, what you put in is pretty much what you'll get out. But when I think of it as, like, some positive person, what you put in is what you'll get out kind of what you put in, you'll get out tenfold if you try hard enough. And so you can pretty much change anything that you got to change in your life. Um, last year, freshman year, I completely, like, effed up in school. I didn't want to do anything. I failed two classes. And this year, I'm book like, I made up the credits for those two classes. Um, English and history classes, by the way, if you're wondering. I made up the credits, and I'm, like, last semester, I died, but not considerably better. And this semester, like, I made mistakes at the beginning of this semester. I am regretting, like, very badly right now. And it's just, I just had to buckle down and do it now. Hopefully I can finish it. Um, but, yeah, this is, like, coming, this is coming to a close. There's, like, about 30 more seconds left. Um, so, like, please don't, like, socially alienate anybody. Because that's not the way to do it. Like, it's easier just to be friends with them and not do anything but like don't try laughing at people they do something bad just or like they do something that's really sec- acceptable just like ignore it or tell them or, or tell somebody that can help them and yeah so um peace out guys do do